Come on, let's continue to clap and praise God. So much has been done already. So much has been done already. Well, today is Miracle Offering Weekend, and I am believing for more. I'm believing for more. I'm believing that this is going to be more than we could ask, imagine, think, dream of. And at the end of the service, we have a special offering that is going to go uh, all around the world. We're going to send it all around the world to do all sorts of good for the name of Jesus and to build his church. And uh, I, I, I can't wait until that moment. But before that, I want to preach today from 2 Kings chapter 7. If you have your Bibles, you can go there. This is where our theme now more than ever came from. When I was reading this story last year, it jumped off the page. God had one of those download moments with me and it turned into now more than ever. Now, before I get there, I have to set it up. I have to go back to 2 Kings chapter six. All right, so I'm gonna set up what's going on. There's a guy by the name of Elisha. He is a prophet of God for the people of Israel. All right, you track with me, the people of God are the Israelites. And there's a man by the name of Elisha, and he is a prophet, which means that God speaks to him in a special way. And then he goes and speaks to the people. Then he goes back and speaks to God, and he brings messages, prophetic messages, back and forth. There's another character in, in chapter 6, uh, the king of Aram, Ben-Hadad. Now, Ben-Hadad wants to attack the Israelites. He's the enemy. He wants to attack them. And every time Ben-Hadad goes to attack the Israelites, God gives Elisha a special message. And he says, uh, tell the king that Ben-Hadad has his troops around that mountain. And so then Elisha goes and tells the king, like, don't go over there. Ben-Hadad has his guys around that mountain. He keeps doing that over and over to the point that Ben-Hadad is thinking, somebody in my team is leaking. When, isn't that what you'd think? Like, who's the mole? Are you the mole? Are you, are you, who's the mole? And that's what he's thinking. And his people tell him, like, no, king, you don't understand. The Israelites have this guy, Elisha, and the Lord speaks to him and gives him these secret messages, and he's telling him what you're going to do. And so Ben-Hadad says, like, I want you to go get Elisha. He's the focus now. We're going after Elisha. Are you with me now? You're still with me? All right. So he goes after him. And this is where we get that famous story where um, Elisha is walking with his servant, and his servant looks around, and he sees Ben-Hadad's army surrounding them. And he says, Elisha, we are surrounded. Like, we are in trouble. And Elisha's like, we're not in trouble. He's like, no, we're in trouble. We are surrounded. And, and Elijah says, it may look like I'm surrounded, <laughs> but I'm surrounded by you. That's where the song came from. This is how I fight my battles. That's what he did. And he said, Lord, open his eyes and let him see that we're not surrounded. And the Lord opens his eyes and shows him the angelic army that is surrounding Ben-Hadad's army. And he's like, oh my goodness, this is happening right now. And in that moment, Elisha prays as they're coming to get him. He says, Lord, blind his army. And so his army gets blinded. And then Elisha goes up to the army. He's like, hey guys, I want to lead you to safety. I want to lead you. Follow me. So they don't even realize they're following Elisha. And he leads them into the city. And then the Israelites surround Ben-Hadad's army, and he says, all right, Lord, open their eyes. Isn't that amazing? And in that moment, they open their eyes, and now they are surrounded. And they're like, oh, boy, now what? And the people of Israel are like, like do we, do we, do, should we kill our enemy? And he says, no, let's feed them and let them go. So they actually feed them, let them go, and the, the army's like, all right, we, we, we don't want to attack them anymore. We're, we're, and they leave. Well, this infuriates Ben-Hadad. It just infuriates him. And he said, if I can't catch him, I am going to starve him to death. I'm going to starve Elijah and the people of God. I'm going to starve them to death. And so he gets a siege around the city. He gets a siege around it and nothing goes in, nothing comes out. And as the food starts to dwindle and as the supplies start to go away, the people are getting desperate. They're starting to eat things they would never eat before. It starts to have inflation, price gouging, all this is going on. And the Bible tells us that a donkey's head sold for 80 shekels. You're like, how much is a lot? It's a lot. For, like people didn't even eat donkeys. And if you're going to pick a part of the donkey to eat, head would be the la you know, eating the head would be the last part that you'd say. And he's saying it was selling for 80 shekels. It's starvation. It's going on, but it doesn't end there. The people are so hungry. 
and they're so desperate because Ben Hadad has this seizure around them that, that they're, it's, they're turning to cannibalism. It's getting that bad. You, do you understand the picture? And I remember my grandfather who was a World War II vet, he said, Rob, when you're, when you're hungry enough, you will eat anything. And he says, you've never been hungry enough. When you're hungry enough, you will eat anything. They are in this moment. It is terrible for God's people. And Elisha stands up and he says, I've got a word from God. I've got another one of these words from God. Tomorrow at this time, the siege is over. You're gonna be eating whatever you want. Like things that were going for high dollars are gonna go for pennies on the dollar tomorrow. And one of the people there laughs at him and says, it's not gonna happen, not gonna happen. Even if God opens up the windows of heaven, it's not gonna happen. And we pick up the story in 2 Kings chapter 7, verse one. Elijah replied, listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver and 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. The officer assisting the king said to the man of God, that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. But Elisha replied, you will see it happen with your own eyes, but you won't be able to eat any of it to this assistant, which by the way, came true. When the miracle happened, this guy got trampled to death. He saw the miracle and never got a taste of it. Now there were four men with leprosy. So we're inside the city, now we go outside. It says, now there were four men with leprosy sitting at the entrance of the city gates. Why should we sit here waiting to die? They asked each other. We will starve if we stay here, but with the famine in the city, we will starve if we go back there. So we might as well go out and surrender to the army and army, but if they let us live, so much the better. But if they kill us, we would have died anyway. So at twilight, they set out for the camp of the Arameans. And the, but when they came to the edge of the camp, no one was there. For the Lord had caused their army to hear the clatter of speeding chariots and the galloping of horses and the sounds of a great army approaching. The king of Israel had, had hired the Hittites and the Egyptianites to attack us, they cried to one another. So they panicked and ran into the night, abandoning their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and everything else as they fled for their lives. When the men with leprosy arrived at the edge of the camp, they went in one tent after another, eating and drinking wine, and they carried off silver and gold and clothing and hid it. Finally, they said to each other, this is not right. This is a day of good news, and we aren't sharing it with anyone. If we wait until morning, some calamity will certainly fall upon us, come on us, go back, and let's go to the people in the palace. So they went back to the city and told the gatekeepers what had happened. We went out to the Aramean camp, they said, and no one was there. The horses, the donkeys were tethered and the tents were all in order, but there wasn't a single person around. Then the gatekeeper shouted the news to the people in the palace. And then from there, they go out and they get the food. What a story. What a story. And how does it get to us today? We'll get there. Inside the gates, there's, there's starvation, there's desperation. And the story switches to the lepers outside four emaciated, they're, they're, they have leprosy, which if that's not bad enough, now they're starving to death and they have leprosy and they're sitting there and these four people are outcasts. They have to leave their family, they have to walk around and stay away from people. They have to ring a bell and say unclean. And they're sitting there in this desperate moment and they're just like, well, we're gonna die if we stay here. We're gonna die if we go into the city. We probably will die if we go to the Aramean army, like, but maybe there's a chance there. Like our only maybe is to go up to the enemy. That's our only maybe. So on a maybe, they move towards like a sliver of hope. And can I pause for just a moment? God loves it when you move on a maybe. I believe that. Uh, so many of us, how many, you're, I want a detailed plan, Lord. I would like a full plan and a strategy you can lay out and just in detail with footings and sub, you know, and God's like, I'm giving you a maybe. And God loves it. And he, they, they move on a maybe and they go into the camp. And what happens? No one is there. No one's there. Like the text said, no one's there. And they did what you and I would do. They're like, eat. Eat, they're starting like, eat, eat, drink. I mean, and, and then they realize, bury, bury, like bury the treasure, bury the treasure. And could you just, can you get the picture of the four of them running around, eating, drinking, like, and eating and drinking, and then burying some more, and burying some more, and burying some more. And then all of a sudden they're thinking like, wait a minute, wait a minute. The, what's going on? Wait a minute. We've been eating, drinking, and investing. 
eating, drinking, and investing. The whole world is suffering from COVID and we've had a banner year. No, they didn't say that. The whole world is suffering from starvation and we've had a banner year. And we've been stuffing our face and we've been eating everything we want and we've been investing and burying and burying. And they're saying, wait, this isn't right. This isn't right. We've got good news to share. We've got good, we, we've got to share this. And they get this revelation. I don't know if it was one or all four, but they just realize, wait a minute, wait a minute. The whole world, like our, our people are suffering and we want to be able, to, we have so much right now. It'd be so wrong to just bury and be heartless and not think about others. Their silence would have gone against everything that we see in God's nature. Something we preach around here is we say, we've been blessed to be a blessing. You're gonna hear that over and over again. We believe that God brings things to us to go through us so that we can bless other people. We're blessed to be a blessing. We don't just eat, drink, bury. We don't just, we, we, we believe that God has called us to be blessed to be a blessing. And if they would have just buried it and said, no, 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 this is our day. This is our day. We're gonna, we're gonna take it all. We're gonna bury it all. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna do this for us. If they just said, we're, we're just gonna build a bigger barn or find a bigger cave. There's probably a story in the New Testament about that, huh? They didn't do that. They didn't say, hey guys, 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 guys. We, we, we can't keep, we just, we just can't. They, they just changed. There's like, we can't do this. We're sitting around, we're having a belching contest because we're so full, like we're so full. Like we got, like we, I, I have buried so much treasure. I don't even know where it's, buried. I mean, we gotta share. And that's where that revelation jumped out to me coming into this year after last year, the way that God finished the year with miracle offering being so strong and our giving being so strong. And then so many people in our church just moving forward into this year. I just felt like God was like, the, the news is too good. The, the, the blessing has been too good. God is asking us to say, don't just eat, drink and bury and invest. But he's saying, the news is so good, you've got to get the news out. You've got to get the news out. Who, who would have thought that God would save a people through lepers? Like lepers. People that were like, please, please, throw me, th throw me some food down from the wall. Unclean, but throw me some. And then now God is saving a city, a people group through them. I thought about this for us. Who would have thought that like a church in Minnesota that started with 13 people, that was $100,000 in debt on credit card, would in turn be able to give millions of dollars annually. I mean, millions and millions of dollars annually to go and to change cities and people groups and, and reach people that have never heard the name of Jesus. Like, who would have ever thought that God would use us? I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I'm in awe all the time. When Beck and I go on walks, I'm like, I can't believe we get to live this life. I can't believe that God's using it. I can't believe, I mean, I can't, I, this is unbelievable. This, I can't believe that we get to do this. That, who are, like, who are we that God would choose? Like, God, we don't want to hold it in just to ourselves. Something that I noticed about the lepers too is they did it right away. They, they did it right away. They're like, I, I don't want to be a, a held accountable for like, like, if we don't do this right away, like something could, bad, like uh, it could be a calamity, like God could judge us. Like we gotta go right now. We gotta go right now and do, we, we wanna do the good we can do right now and go and do it. And I think this is something about, that I love about our church. It's right now. We do it right now. This church is like, let's give and give up generously right now. It's not like, well, we hope someday. People are like, I wanna do it right now. I, I thought about this, like how many people would have starved to death if they'd have waited 24 hours? How many people would starve to death if they waited a week or a year? And, and what about the world when they look at us, they're like, hey, are, are, are you gonna do something? Are you gonna send it? Are you gonna bring that resource? Are you gonna, now more than ever, are you gonna bring the good news? And my answer is yes, we're gonna do it again and we're gonna do it again and we're gonna do it again. They knew this news was good news, that it was bigger than themselves, that it came from God. And, and they, they knew that we have to share, we have to give, we have to change this city. And I believe this, that they went back and, and shared and saved a whole city. They saved a whole city because they're like, look what we found. Look what God did. Now, here's what I've, I've noticed too about the story. God's always working behind the scenes. God's always working behind the scenes. I mean, the one thing that I am in awe at is just 
Like, I, and, I, and I gotta keep reminding myself, whenever things look bad, I'm always like, oh no! And I gotta remember, oh, wait, wait, God's working. God's working. I mean, I've had, oh no! And it's like, oh wait, I, I, should, I, I should have enough faith by now to know that God is working. Like, little did those uh, lepers know, I mean, little did they know that God was like, you guys, get ready. I got this great soundtrack with horses and, uh, and, 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 and warriors, and I'm gonna play it in total surround sound, and they're gonna, like, we had no, you couldn't make that up. And I believe that. You, you can't make up the way God was working behind the scenes in our lives. You're like, I, I never would have thought. I talked to business owner after business owner, record year. We thought it was over, and then record year. Restaurant owners, like they get, it's gonna be terrible. And they're like, our profits are way up. We actually closed on the inside and made more money with just drive through. I mean, just amazing, uh, we, we held our job. We did this, this went through. Construction kept going. Uh, record, record years. God is working behind the scenes that we have no idea. And I just believe now more than ever, it's time for us to realize, God, it would be terrible for us to just hold this in. It'd be terrible for us to just do what we want to do and to just think about us and to just, like, I, I believe this. We've buried a lot of treasure. We've had, we've been eating and drinking and burying treasure. And God's like, it, it's time to share the good news. It's time to take the resources and share this. And I just want to share that so far this year, God has been speaking to you. And I, I see it so clearly. You have been living this, like, now more than ever, we want to share. Now more than ever, we want to move forward. Now, all of the campuses and online, you heard where you're at individually as a campus. You heard where your giving is at and you saw your goal. I wanna put them all together now to put all eight physical locations and our online campus together and let you know where we are as a church because so far you have been saying, Lord, we're not gonna bury it. We're not gonna bury it. Now more than ever, we're gonna give. Now, I wanna put some context in this. Last year at this time, as we were going into the miracle offering, last year at this time, we were at $3,057,938. So $3,057,000, which matched the year before. And in COVID, I was really excited that we matched the year before. One year later, today, I'm here to announce to you, we are at $4,979,228. Come on, you gotta clap louder than that. That's incredible. That's almost $2 million more. I mean, you get a number like that, I kept saying, are you sure that's right? Double check it. And they came back, that's right. I said, triple check it. They came back, I said, quadruple check it. I said, all right, all of you agree. You're, you're all fired if it's wrong. I mean, I was like, like, it's right. It's right, that's what God has been doing. And you know what? I can see us going past our goal of 7.5 million on Miracle Offering Weekend. I can. I can see us blowing right by that. Here's what I see in my mind. There's still people under siege right now. And there are orphans that need an orphanage built. There are new campuses that need to be started with this. There are church plants that need to start in America and all around the world. We're planting churches in dozens of countries around the world. The Eswatini campus, where we have an orphanage and a campus we run, they need resources. There's a Thailand church plant that we are funding and helping to get moving forward. I, I see them, they're under siege. There's people that need the fire Bible, a Bible in their language, they're under siege. There's Cuba ministry that we still have to fund. There's the hand of hope that is digging wells and placing a church right next to it that we need to fund. There's live dead uh, projects all around the world where it's difficult and dangerous, where people are under siege. You talk about siege, you can't get into that country or out of that country unless you're coming in with a business as mission type thing. And God's saying, get in there, bring this. It's too good to keep to yourself. Keep sending resources. There's churches we need to start in Japan. There's churches that we need to start in Indonesia. There's so much to do in India. And I'm praying that we won't just eat, drink, invest. Eat, drink, bury. Eat, drink, invest. But today's one of those days that there's gonna be a great release. And we're gonna say, this is too good to keep to ourselves. This is too good to keep to ourselves. And we're gonna say, God, just like those lepers, they like, we gotta go. We gotta tell them there's great news 
there's good news, and there's life-changing news that can change your city. I believe that we can share the message of Jesus Christ with this world, and this miracle offering is gonna do that. It's gonna be one of those days that will bring the message of Jesus to places that are right now under siege. And one of those places that we wanna change is one of the 7,000 unreached people groups of the world. It's called Varanasi, Varanasi. It's in India. And we pray that what we give today on this weekend uh, will help end the spiritual starvation of so many people and all the different projects. But we are committed to going to the 42% of the world that has never heard the name of Jesus. They're under siege by false gods and idols that are holding them bound. And we're saying, we have good news. We have good news. It might not have reached you yet, but we're coming and we're sending resources. And I pray that as we look at the, uh, this video of Varnasi, that we'll just realize now more than ever, we're supposed to be blessed to be a blessing. We're not going to bury what we have, but we're going to say we gladly share with a world that so desperately needs Jesus. In places like Varanasi and thousands of other unreached areas of the world, the depths of lostness is like being at the bottom of a well where the light just doesn't penetrate at all. They are hoping that when they bathe in the river that their sins are going to be washed away. They're hoping for a connection with God that the river can't give them that the priest can't give them. With Varanasi being the spiritual hub of India, if we can have breakthroughs in Varanasi, we will have breakthroughs in India. The greatest challenge we have to date is not the darkness. It's not how far people are from the Lord. The greatest challenge in Varanasi is that the people of God are not listening to His voice. Christ gave his life for them. What will you give? What will you do? Today, we're praying that God's people will hear his voice and make a decision to be part of God's redemption story for the nearly 7,000 unreached people groups around the world, like Varanasi.